I've been working with Habitat for Humanity for nearly six years, and last year was the first time I've come on a Habitat Big Build. Well, um, I've been with Habitat for five years. This is my third trip. I really enjoy these trips. I really enjoy getting out of my comfort zone. This is my first mission trip that I've ever done. I should have done one sooner in life, but I'm really glad that I'm doing one now. I'm really excited about this trip. It's uh, really an amazing opportunity for us as an affiliate to be hands-on in the developing countries that we also serve. I'm a mom of three. My youngest just went away to college. She is a freshman, so checked my schedule and with all of my kids gone, just the timing of it, it all happened to work out that I was like, I definitely can do this. Traveling to Ho Chi Minh for me was super exciting because it was my first time um, traveling across the country like that. I'd been out of the country once, but it was close by. We started this trip leaving Nashville at 7.15 a.m. and then directly from Chicago to Tokyo, which is a, was a 13-hour flight. We had a five-hour layover in Tokyo, and then we traveled from Tokyo to Ho Chi Minh City for seven hours. We made it into Ho Chi Minh around midnight, and it was about uh, maybe 1.30 in the morning that we arrived to the hotel, so it was really quite an exhausting day. Ho Chi Minh was like sensory overload. The traffic was nuts. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And they absolutely do not stop for you when you're crossing the road. So I was running across the road most of the time. And I think they could probably tell I was a tourist because the locals were like calm and steady walking through traffic. And then I was like, felt like I was in a dead sprint to get across. First thing you notice about Vietnam is the weather. It is unbelievably hot, unbelievably humid. The smells of the fruit, everything was just different, but I think it made it more exciting that it was different. This morning we had the opportunity to just have some, some rest and relaxation for a full day before we uh, drive out to the province tomorrow. So we had uh, breakfast at the hotel, and then we just had a chance to kind of by foot walk around Saigon and visit some of the different sites. Culture was very um, welcoming to us. Also at the same time, as welcoming as they were, it was just, it was super sad to see some of the, the way people lived. There's plenty of people out there that, that come up to you and, and, and because they know we're tourists, obviously from the United States, and they come up to us and, and ask us for things and it just, it's heartbreaking not to be able to do more for, for people. There are sights and smells and experiences that are difficult to go through. But there's also the counterbalance of that where you see how much we as humans are all alike and you still see um, mothers holding their babies and people playing with puppies and you see that even though there are all these challenges and differences that we're all still people that are just trying to get along and trying to find love. We went to a local market. It was something like you'd seen in the movies. 
like people bargaining and um, that was really neat to see people negotiating and I was a little intimidated too so I didn't even buy anything but I planned to later. <laughs> we visited the palace, we visited the, the War Remnants Museum and uh, I believe uh, Sean rode back on motorcycle so he could see <laughs> the city firsthand but it was just a fun day of relaxing and having lunch and uh, seeing what Saigon has to offer. On Sunday, after kind of uh, having a, maybe about a day and a half of just relaxation in Ho Chi Minh City, we traveled three hours to the province of Dong Thap. The, the fun part is you go from this and this experience to a little bitty town. Um, so the bus ride getting here was about three hours long. We went from Ho Chi Minh to Dong Tap, and it was just as crazy as the traffic in Ho Chi Minh, and I don't know why, but I remained calm. I was more afraid for the people outside of the bus. I guess I felt safe in the bus, but just looking to the side, you could see people literally this close next to you. Um, I gasped a couple times out loud because we were so close. We checked in the hotels, had a few team leader meetings just to discuss the logistics of the week, and believe me, this is a lot to pull together 226 volunteers from around the world in a small town in Vietnam is not an easy feat so my hats off to those people. So we got up Monday morning, ate breakfast, uh, took a, about a 20 minute bus ride to the build site, which it's really neat because I feel like our build site is one of the furthest away, so we really get to see um, the village. And our bus pulls up and we see this bridge and the Habitat Vietnam staff had already warned us about it and they said they repaired it, but seeing it, um, you have to stay in the middle of the bridge and the boards are kind of wobbly and I personally am scared of heights So my heart was pounding going across it the first time um, But honestly throughout this entire trip I've been out of my comfort zone in the best way possible and that bridge was an instance of that and now we're all um, Days later just walking across it. No problem It never seems like a good time. There's always so much going on at home you know, there's never really a good time to go on a trip like this, but once I got to the site that we're on right now and, and started building, all of those worries went away and um, my main goal became building a house for a family that really, really needs a safer place to live. And at the same time, I've been picking up the camera a lot and enjoying um, capturing all of this on, on video. Good morning, everybody. I would like to introduce with you Miss Ling. She is the homeowner. Her husband is uh, here. He is now working far away from her home. She has two daughters. One brother-in-law and one granddaughter. They are relying on growing rice and selling labor. Her husband, he has a broken eyes, a injured eyes, I don't know how to say, but disabled. Can you ask her how she's feeling about today? Uh, yes, yeah, she doesn't know how to say, just cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, seeing the homeowner's face, his tears ran down her, you know, her face, uh, just realizing that we were all there to build a much needed house for her. Her current conditions are extremely, um, Wow, just 
uh, less than what any of us in America would be used to seeing. And so it's just really wonderful to see the, the joy and the excitement in her face. And that's really been the best part of it for me. I think my, f my first reaction is, well, sort of twofold. I look at the slab and think, wow, this is a small house. It's going to be a small house. And then you look at the house that they're in, you could see the issues with the house there, and now the, it's, it's made of just whatever they could find, um, tin and wood and, and scraps just sort of put together. And you realize that's not a comfortable or safe place to live. They have been living here in this house for a long time, more than 20 years. So whenever it rains, the water comes from outside into the house and they feel very worried and sad. When Habitat come to support their house, to build a new house, uh, she feel very happy and don't know how to say just say thank you to all the guys coming to help them to build the house. Yes. One of my favorite parts of the trip so far is just meeting the homeowner. I'm not a super emotional person like I feel like I'm super caring, but a lot of times I don't show that. And um, I just got overwhelmed when I met her and saw how overwhelmed she was and how grateful she was. And I couldn't help but get emotional. So walking up to see this family's home the first time was a little overwhelming because it was just in horrific condition. And to be able to move them into a habitat home is just an amazing feeling to know that we're going to change this family's life. They're going to have a place for their children to study because they know that education is important and that they can change their lives and their children's lives through education. And I, I can already picture them in my mind sitting on their porch with that beautiful backdrop of the rice paddy behind them and that contentment and seeing them work together on the porch. And I'm just going to know that they're safe that they're not going to have to worry about everything in their home being flooded or losing a part of their roof every time it rains. That simplicity and that beauty of, of just something as a roof over your head is, it's, you know, it's so powerful. Thank you for this family, Father. I thank you for the blessing that this is to uh, this family. And uh, we just thank you, Father, that this will be a memorable time for each and every person here and for this family and something that everyone will remember for the rest of their lives. We just thank you for flowing and prosperity into this community. We thank you for blessings overtaking this family today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm standing in what will be the living room to the house. Um, our goal of the day is to try and get all the walls all around about a meter up. So uh, this space here will be the front of the house facing out. And right here we'll put a wall in and this is the bedroom here in the back of the house. Um, there will be a window there in that front, front section of the house. And then here will be uh, a door leading out to the back where the kitchen and the bathroom will be located. The weather has been cooperative. It's it's probably 80s, right? right? And uh, last year in Cambodia, it was it was a lot hotter and, and uh, just humid and whatnot. And this is this is pretty good. So can't complain. Hey, thank you, everybody. Work hard today. See you tomorrow. Okay, day one of our build is in the books, and um, it was incredible. I, I don't normally work this hard, so my back hurts really bad. This, um, this is not for the faint at heart at all. I will never lie and say this is an easy thing, but we were very hot. It's extremely humid, um, and so it takes some getting used to um, building in these conditions, but all in all, it's just been a really beautiful experience. You become so close to the people you work with, I think especially in, in our environment. We've got 12 folks in the office and they become like your family. 
So it's like traveling with your family. Does anybody want to share their feelings? Other than Wayne, does anybody want to share their feelings? All right, here you go, Wayne. hurt right now. <laughs> I feel betrayed. <laughs> Our dear Father, we come before you give you thanks for this day. We thank you for everything that we've done to our lives. We thank you for making us be able to be here today and uh, to continue with your good work, O oh Lord. And uh, may you continue blessing our hearts, blessing our minds, and uh, let everything that we do, let it speak unto your words, O oh Lord. One of the, the highlights of this trip has really been to have Benson here with me. I met Ben five years ago and I was actually on a missions trip in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. We were kind of a little bit of a street ministry team. Uh, he was 19 years old at the time and we really connected and had some good talks and, and he walked us around Kibera where he lives which happens to be the largest slum in uh, Africa. And, Ben grew up there, and over the years, we really have become like father and son, and even more so this past year, we really developed a father-son relationship. We kept on communicating, talking to each other, and that's how I ended up here. And uh, it's by the grace of God, and uh, through, through God, he sent uh, Mr. Wayne to, to call me, and um, I'm here, I answered. He's just such a phenomenal guy and I'm so inspired by him and I love him a thousand times over. I want to capture the beautiful smiles. I want to capture the, the reality of what people do here. It's, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to portray the negative side. I don't want to do negative stories. I want to put the positive side of how people live here. For me, it's, a, it's, it's been a life changing for me experience because I never knew like somewhere here in Vietnam people are, people are so happy. There's hope, there's love, there's joy, there's peace over here. It's amazing how happy people seem with just the simple things that they have. Even the family that we're building for, they're always smiling and hugging on each other and you constantly see neighbors coming by on their motorcycles and smiling and waving and they just seem like a really happy culture. On our standards, on United States standards, this is, this is probably not a house that any of us would think is necessarily amazing. But um, safe, decent, and affordable just means so many different things around the world. This is a house that costs $3,000 to build completely. The homeowner's contribution is about $250. But the most important thing to the homeowner is that it keeps the elements out. So to see the look on her face, to see this 280 square foot house being built and the neighbors in the village come down and they just sit there with amazement because they're like, wow, you know, she's getting this house or whatever. And it's just, it's just really beautiful because I think it puts into perspective what we, uh, what we put value into, that we, you know, we strive for bigger and better things and bigger and better houses. And here's someone that's just really looking for the simple, like they can find joy in just a simple house where they can be safe and they can raise their kids and that's just, I, I find such beauty in that. I'm actually pretty excited about the build today. I think we're a little bit behind schedule but I don't think we're too far behind. Um, you can see out my hotel window here. People are starting to go to work. On day four, we had rain, which for all of us building, it felt pretty good after being in really hot, humid weather. Maybe not so much for the family we were building for. We got to see firsthand what they go through when the rain comes through. They had to cover up their little hut with just about anything they could find to keep the water from coming in. We all may have seen poverty in the United States, but in a way it doesn't compare to some of the poverty you see overseas and uh, some of the conditions. But as Sean said in, in a prior segment, 
everybody seems so proud and happy and uh, thankful for what they have. It's uh, just, you don't see that all the time. And you see people, unfortunately, that have a lot that are never satisfied, but these folks seem to have very little and, and are, are very satisfied and thankful. Uh, he said that uh, he wish you guys all the best and have a safe trip back to the country. And uh, he wish that all of the poor households like uh, his family could uh, have uh, the support like him so that they can uh, live in a safer and affordable house. Come on. Cảm ơn rất nhiều ạ. Today is the last day of the build and we're all feeling pretty tired but uh, energized that we get to dedicate the house to the family today. It won't be completely done. I think the walls will be up though and um, there'll be some interior work that um, some professional builders will, will do once we leave. But um, I'm a little sad actually. It's been... Um, Walking over that bridge every day has, has been an incredible experience and hanging out with that family has been a, an opportunity of a lifetime. All right. Wow. Five days already. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys believe it? And it probably... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. <laughs> it's probably meant a lot for us, as much for us as it made for you. It's, it's, been, it's been really special for us to be here. I love your family. Your family is absolutely beautiful. I hope this home will be a blessing to your family and your children and your children's children. This was my first ever team building. Uh, I came here to build a house, but at the end of the day, you built something in my heart. And, uh, that's the, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing, uh, and um, you have love all the way from Kenya. Well, this has been my first experience as well, being on a mission trip, and it's changed me forever, and your family is so beautiful. I thank you guys for opening your home to us and making us feel welcome and, and comfortable and tending to our needs. And uh, we will never forget this. This will be part of our lives forever. I also want to, on behalf of Habitat for Humanity, Williamson Murray, all the way from Franklin, Tennessee, and Kenya, <laughs> uh, is, to, is to thank um, the staff and the volunteers here in Vietnam, and Yen, for taking care of us all week. Thank you so much. Yes. And. And Min and Ka and, <laughs> and Ty for keeping us from hurting ourselves out here because we don't really know what we're doing. And you've just been so nice and friendly and gracious to us the entire week. Your smile is amazing to see every time we show up. So when I get home, I will be going back to my normal life but I will be much more humbled. <laughs> Everything is gonna look more beautiful and exciting to me when, when I get back to the States. I couldn't ask for a better place to be than Habitat. It's one of those dream jobs.
trips are like a reset on, on my whole life, actually, because you get so caught up in the day-to-day. -day. When I get here, everything calms down. It calms down, and even though the traffic is, is going everywhere and it's loud and the smells, and you have one job to do. Your job is to serve that family. It's to build that house the best you possibly can. It's to motivate your team members. Um, and everything, it comes in. It's like everything is about that one moment in time. And how many people get to do that? How many people get to go somewhere and really help someone and walk away at the end of the day knowing what they did made? A, a change in their whole life, for the rest of their life, for generations to come of their family. And I think that's what's so powerful about Habitat. Even if it's over in the United States or it's here, it's tangible, it's, it's physical. It's, you know you're doing something, you know the family's getting something. I really want everyone to know that if they thought about getting involved or they wondered you know, what it would be like, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna love it. You're going to remember it for the rest of your life. You're gonna go home to your kids and you're gonna say when you're old enough, you're gonna come with me and you're gonna experience this because we are so lucky.